We're going to talk about these three types of skills that you are using every day at work and your, uh, your employees and your colleagues and your bosses, everybody using these same three types of skills every day at work. We're going to start with job specific skills. These are the skills that if you were to change careers, you wouldn't take these skills with you. So these are very, in some cases, centered skills, including your, your institutional knowledge. This is the knowledge of the systems here. This is the knowledge of your markets. This would include also skills you have in your career that are very focused on that career. For example, the nurse who can give an IV, that's not a skill she'll or he will be using if he becomes a, a, a baker, right? The concert pianist, that skill is not going to translate into being an engineer. Um, these, are the, these are the skills you get paid for, the knowledge that you get paid to have. Transferable skills. These are skills, in contrast, that we could take with us to lots of other places, lots of other careers, actually. So for example, using a computer keyboard. Right? I can take that with me to other careers. It will come in handy there as well. Public speaking, um, driving a vehicle. You'll notice that management skills goes here. Right? I, I get asked uh, quite often um, from a potential client, uh, do you work as a consultant in this industry? And guess what our answer always is? Yeah, because I'm not here to teach you how to be a better engineer, right? It's, it's about management skills. Management skills can transcend industries. So those are transferable skills. And then we have what we're going to call adaptive skills. And what it says there on your page, and this is really important, these are the skills that you brought with you from childhood, and they make or break your success in almost every part of your life, right? These are the skills, what did you say? I said, oh, that explains it. Oh, that explains it. <laughs> Crap. Crap. In fact, that's, that's funny because often when I say this, often when I, make that, when I make that statement, these are the skills you brought with you from childhood and they make or break your success, you really do get that look on people's face sometimes, which is like, oh, great, I'm hosed. You know? <laughs> and that's not, the pro that's, not, that's not true because here's the cool thing. Adaptive skills are not locked in. The fact that you brought this with you from childhood is not the same thing as saying that you can't change and grow, right? In fact, that's going to be our theme here. We're going to talk about the fact that you're not stuck in whatever level of adaptive skills you showed up in to adulthood with. You're not stuck. And we're going to actually talk about the mechanism. We're going to talk about a formula. We're going to talk about how we make changes to, these, to, to this level of skills. Now, before we get into that, I want to make sure we're really on the same page here. When, what, what are we talking about here? Adaptive skills. Let's talk about, well, let's do some examples. And, and I think these examples will prove to you, if you're skeptical, these really are the skills that you brought with you from childhood. And these really are the skills that are going to make or break your success in almost every part of your life. For example, if I get up the guts to give you feedback about something, and you punish me by being defensive, what will I do different next time? Right. Why would I touch that hot stove again? Right? I, gave, I got up the guts to give you feedback. You acted defensive. Didn't it already take me a bunch of courage to give you that feedback in the first place? Right? And then you punish me with defensiveness? You know what? I'm not going to do that next time. Next time instead, I'll just work around you or I'll talk about you behind your back. Right? And you'll miss information and we both won't benefit. We both lose right? because of your inability to receive feedback non-defensively. That's an adaptive skill. Can we agree that not every adult has that skill? Right? Now, can we also agree that that skill will come in handy, not just at work, but in all your relationships? Right? The ability to receive feedback non-defensively, that will, that will Im impact you with your partner in life, your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your kids, your employees, of course, your boss, everybody. That's a really important adaptive skill. And that's one of the trifecta. In fact, we have three adaptive skills that, well, there's, there's so many more, but we've chosen three that we are saying, at least during this five-day workshop, you have to have these three adaptive skills as a manager. Can you imagine, and I, you probably don't have to imagine, you probably have run into this before, imagine a manager who is not open to feedback. 
that translates into this word we call unapproachable, right? Because now you have a person with a power differential and they're unapproachable, I mean, and they're, non and, and they're defensive, right? You take defensiveness and power differential, you put those together, that equals unapproachable. And you cannot be an effective manager if you're unapproachable, agreed? You're going to miss so many things, okay? So that, there's an adaptive skill, the ability to receive feedback non-defensively. How about the opposite skill or the, 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 the accompanying skill, the ability to give feedback with both clarity and compassion? Right? That's not a skill that everybody has. That's an art, in fact, to be able to give feedback in a way that tells the truth and is clear, but at the same time maintains relationship. Right? That's not easy to do. And that's the second of our three adaptive skills that we will be spending time on together. In fact, when I say spending time on these three adaptive skills, we're actually going to dig in and learn these skills. These are going to be adaptive skill growth opportunities for everybody in this room. Here's another one that you need to have as a manager. And I would just say as a person in relationship with anybody, the ability to listen so people feel heard. Now again, can we agree that not every adult has that skill? Right? A lot of people don't know how to listen without being heard. And side note, let's go back to Jahari's window. Did you know that many people, in fact, I would say most people who tend to be defensive don't know they're defensive? Actually, I've heard this phrase a number of times in various um, iterations. I wasn't being defensive. I was just defending myself. Okay? <laughs> I don't think you know the definition of defensiveness. Right? And I know there's people, and I was one of them, and I still struggle with this. We'll talk about that later. Assertive listeners. Right? I already know what you're going to say, and you're kind of boring me now, so I'm just going to finish your sentence for you. That helps us both move forward. Right? Um, the assertive listening is a thing. Um, it's not very effective. I heard you is one thing, but you didn't feel heard. And by the way, listening feels like hearing. I'm going I'm to give you a little story about this. There was a, a study where they had these teenagers in one-on-one -on -one conversations with an adult. And some of these kids, I will call this the control group, it was just kind of a mundane, chit-chatty conversation. No special skills being practiced. The other group, these kids are having a conversation with the adult, and this time that adult is using these specific listening skills, which we're going to be working on here. Um, later on, when they asked the kid to talk about the adult they were with, it's the kids in the second group who said, he cared about me. She cared about me. Now, there was nothing in the conversation that would have indicated caring. Nothing, on purpose. Yet that child believed they were cared about. Why did they believe they were cared about? Because they were hurt. <laughs> being heard feels like being cared about. Okay? These three adaptive skills, receiving feedback non-defensively, giving feedback with clarity and compassion, listening so the other person feels heard, this is the trifecta in my opinion, meaning that you act, these are just basic requirements to be an effective manager. And at the same time, not everybody in this room has those three skills, and there's no shame in that. Right? The, the only thing that would make me maybe a little frustrated with you is if you didn't care to learn those skills, and you still want to be a manager. Okay? Let's list some more of these. Um, my ability to handle my own stress and anxiety without having to leak it out on everyone around me. That's an adaptive skill, which means I can have a bad day and I don't have to make sure you have a bad day too. My ability to just show up and be engaged in a conversation, um, in a group setting, my ability to do consensus work with others, to do decision making. Um, there's a bunch of adaptive skills, for example, wrapped up in leading a good meeting. There's technical management skills in there too. In fact, that's a good place for me to say this. Look at these two levels. When we talk about management training and management skill building over the next five days, we're doing both of these, right? We're going to be doing sort of specific, hard management skills, um, meaning technical management skills, how to have this critical conversation with an employee, how to lead a good meeting are examples of that, how to use the decision-making model. But every one of those skills has adaptive skills woven right into them. Can you imagine leading a good meeting and having no adaptive skills? <laughs> Right? No situational awareness. Right? Lots of adaptive skills come with leading a good meeting. We could spend literally the day just listing adaptive skills. 
right? The, the, this, this is, um, uh, here's kind of a summary. Adaptive skills are how we show up. It's the impact we have on others. It's the way we react. It's the way we respond. It's the way we make people feel, right? That's adaptive skills. It's huge. And it's very closely aligned. It's kind of Venn diagrammed pretty much with an overlap over the concept of emotional IQ. You all heard of that? Emotional IQ, right? Now here's the cool thing about this. There's IQ and there's emotional IQ, right? According to research, which one impacts your long-term success more? Absolutely. In fact, it's not even in question. The studies we've looked at put the ratio somewhere between like 70-30 all the way up to 80-20. That's how powerful emotional IQ is. Now the good news is, between emotional IQ and actual IQ, which one can you do something about? That's the good news. IQ, you're stuck with what you got. Good luck, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's the emotional IQ that we have a lot of wiggle room on this one. We actually have the ability to grow and change. Now, which level of skills do most organizations spend all their training time on? Yeah. Right up on top, right? Now, this is one of the signs of, I think, of a healthy organization. It's an organization that is not going to just spend time up there. Now, you can't skip that, of course. You obviously have to make sure people are equipped to do their job. That, you, I'm, I'm not suggesting that you don't spend time on the top level. You have to. In fact, you should be hiring in part for that top level too, or at least training toward it. Everybody agree with that? You have to, otherwise you're not gonna be successful as a company. But it's the su most successful, and I believe the most healthy organizations, who include adaptive skills in four different areas. Hiring, onboarding, training, and evaluation. And I'm gonna list those again. It's the healthiest organizations who include adaptive skills in four areas. Hiring, onboarding, ongoing training, and evaluation. Let's start with hiring. Do we all agree that it's important to hire for adaptive skills? Can we also get hard? It's really hard to hire for adaptive skills. Most people at their job interview don't say, oh, excuse me, before we go on, I just need to let you know I'm a vicious gossip, <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't get that kind of information. So, so creative ways to hire, to look for adaptive skills, right? Onboarding, and you're gonna hear me do a soapbox, soapbox on onboarding later. I think onboarding is a really important thing, and onboarding is not, here's a bunch of HR policies, and here's where to park your car. I mean, onboarding should take months, a couple months. It should be part of your first quarter of your experience here. It should be um, your values. It should, and I don't just mean handing them a piece of paper. It sh if you're moving into leadership, it should be this kind of work. It should be about how we show up here as people with our adaptive skills, right? That's onboarding. Um, ongoing training, like we're doing here. And then evaluation. I mentioned this this morning. I know a lot of organizations where managers aren't evaluated on management skills and individuals aren't evaluated on their adaptive skills, which is the way we show up. It's the way we impact people.